Hey everyone, I'm back with another RTX 4090 benchmarking video. This time we're looking at DCS in VR again on the Reverb G2 at maximum render resolution at 90Hz. So today I'm going to start on the Super Carrier with the default VR preset and then I'm going to move over to a airstrip and run it on a custom high VR preset and a second custom VR preset with the details turned up a little bit higher just so you can get an idea of what the performance is like on the 4090. After I've done some flying, I'll come back and do some analysis on the benchmark data and give you my thoughts. Okay, we're now in DCS in the F18 Hornet and we're on the Super Carrier. So this is actually the first time I've seen this module. I picked this up during the DCS uh, end of summer sale with the intention of learning to fly this. Because I've not run this on another system before, um, I don't know how well that is performing. Oh, it's GPUs at 67%, we're at native resolution on the uh, Reverb G2, so the G2 is maxed out, and this is really sharp. And this is using the standard out of the box VR preset, which I hopefully would have flashed up at the start of the video. And yeah, I'll probably, I'm gonna try and take off, not crash, fly around the carrier a little bit. Oh well, yeah, so with the um, FPS is dropping a bit when I look backwards. Which is interesting, uh, but the reason isn't to do the GPU frame time, it's actually the CPU frame time is exceeding the 11 milliseconds. So I think it's a known issue with DCS, it's uh, very CPU constrained. We're going to try and take off, so I believe we need to throttle up. I had a quick look at the uh, quick start guide. Uh, online from Wags and he said throttle up then salute well there's no one here so I'm just going to throttle up oh shit we're off <laughs> wow okay we're flying and then I have to uh, Check my bindings to lift the undercarriage up. Yeah, up. Should be that one. All oh, right. Bit of a nose peek there to see what the. Yeah, this should be up. Getting a master alarm for something. So it's like the wheels aren't up, they should be. Oh, there you go. It must be up now. Go with that. All right, so this is now with the custom high preset. So we can get an idea of GPU frame time then. Try another takeoff, see if we can not crash this time. This way. 
we get CPU frame constraint. Interesting. So we'll probably turn up the um, anti-aliasing. Improve the uh, sharp. I mean, it's, it's fairly sharp inside. Okay, so I tweak the graphic settings a bit more, turn up a little bit higher, and I f think I found the sweet spot for the 4090, at least where <clears throat> I'm looking forwards. So we're looking at 90% GPU usage now, based on the last settings that I picked and saved to my custom profile 2. And we look at a frame time of 10 milliseconds, so just under the 11 milliseconds we need to hit that 90 hertz. CPU frame time looks okay, and that is sharp. That's on extreme visibility. So maximum view distance. When we look this way, it is uh, we get CPU frame time constraint. And as you can see, there's one core that's uh, looks like it's getting maxed out. Some smoke overhead. Do an outside view. I think we can. Okay. Signs look sharp, and you see the smoke in the distance. Ahoy, hoy. Go baby. Shoot danger zone music. Flying. Oh, that's so cool. so far into the distance. Uh, I have not clue how the fire is playing so I can't shut off that warning sound. See some low level afterburner flying. Just for a look. Caution. Uh, maybe that's it. Okay, we're moving now. This is incredible. This is 
first time flying a jet in this game. I'm not sure. I'll do a lot better once I've uh, done the read the manual and done the training. Right now, I'm winging it. In this video, I think we should try and eject. Eject, eject, eject. Okay. Well, that's peaceful. At least I figured out the eject seat. Okay, first up, we'll look at the benchmark data that I had on the 3090. We'll have to take a pinch of salt with this data because this was actually in the Apache on an airstrip and the 4090 benchmarks were done in the F-18. So different aircraft, so different workloads, but it, this just gives us a, a rough idea of how it performed on the 3090 before I switched the cards over. So you can see here, this is on the VR default preset. And here you can see we've got an average uh, frame time of about 12 and a half seconds, which was above the uh, magic 11 milliseconds that we need to attain 90 Hertz. And the CPU time was actually uh, not too bad here. I'll speak about this some more in a moment because we encountered some issues in our benchmark for the 4090. But well, that's because I think the uh, location of where I was in the uh, Apache was not as uh, CPU intensive as what it was for the uh, the main benchmark. So anyway, that gives you a rough idea. And you can see the 3090 was having uh, quite a lot of uh, workload activity here. If we go over and look at the equivalent VR default preset on the 4090 on the supercarrier, you can see it paints a completely different picture. So our GPU uh, average frame time is way under the 11 milliseconds here. So we're getting the frame time that we need from the GPU and you can see the uh, GPU is not stressed at all. It's on like 70% on average, but you can see this is the bit where um, when I was looking back towards the tower on the carrier, you can see we had um, some CPU constraints here. So something to Bear in mind in this scenario, we've actually got more GPU power than we can use just because of this uh, thread constraint here. I'm not exactly sure if anything can be done to improve this other than buying a more powerful CPU. So this was the custom one VR high preset. And you can see here from the uh, frame time, this is actually looking pretty spot on uh, for what we need. So we're way below the 11 milliseconds, non bleeding over. And in terms of GPU usage, we're on about 70% on average. So this is actually a good configuration. Uh, at this point, I decided to turn the graphics details up even higher for custom preset two. So I'll move over to that now. And you can see at this point here, we do have some of the uh, frame times from the GPU going over that 11 milliseconds. So I think in the video, I said this felt like the sweet spot when I was looking forward. And that probably is true for the most part, because you can see the um, GPU f utilization here is in the high, uh, well, low 90s. So the GPU is getting a good workout. And when you're looking forward, it looks very clear. So that's all good. But we've got a bit of a problem here where we're going over the 11 milliseconds. So probably somewhere between these two presets is where it'd need to be, just to make sure everything was under that 11 milliseconds. And the other thing is you can see here the, uh, the CPU time on some of these is going up like all the way to like 16 milliseconds and same here. So 
obviously got some um, thread constraints here that are causing us a bit of an issue. So I guess what I'm saying is, um, yes, this uh, the, the 1490 does work very well for DCS, but it isn't the, uh, the primary constraint depending on what the scene is uh, and really the custom one preset, which I'll have to bring up the details for, is probably the most um, reliable setting to pick if you're going to go out of the two. This, depending on what the kind of map you're on, might be better for just plain uh, out at sea um, situations. Uh, but if you're on an airfield with a lot of terrain for low level flying, this one might be best. So uh, I'll just bring up the details of where we're up to in terms of overall benchmarks. So this was the DCS one and I've just plotted the 3090 data uh, against the 4090 on the default VR. So again, we have to take this figure with a pinch of salt because this was in the Apache and this was on the F-18 on the carrier. So two, dif two different environments. But as a rough guide, you can see here that we were getting a, a delivered FPS of 71 because we weren't getting enough GPU frames delivered. Uh, but with the 4090, we easily hit that and our frame time was a lot lower at 7.1 on average. And that gave us a theoretical FPS of 101 FPS versus the 81 on 3090. So that's about a 73% uh, improvement. And that seems to be uh, consistent with all the other scores that we've seen so far in different games. So, so far we've seen um, improvements between 46% to about 100% overall. It does vary not only between games how much the improvement is, but the level of graphics preset that you're picking uh, makes a big difference too. So that's it for the RTX 4090 benchmark on DCS on the HP Reverb G2. So in summary, I'd say yes, there's definitely a performance benefit using the 4090 in DCS. However, we still will be in certain circumstances CPU constrained. So unless there's certain settings in the game that can be altered, that'll improve this. It's always going to be an issue. All right, that's it. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up. Any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.